Thank you for taking time to watch the GSI CORDI tutorial. The CORDI is a handheld screening or diagnostic otoacoustic emission device. It features an easy four button navigation panel and intuitive software in a compact hardware design. The CORDI may be configured with TEOAE, DPOAE, or both for either screening or diagnostic otoacoustic emissions, which makes it a great choice for many applications from newborn hearing screening to adult diagnostics. Included with the GSI CORDI are three software options for data management, GSI Suite, GSI Data Manager, and GSI Auto Print. It is also possible to print results directly from the GSI CORDI to an optional printer. Otoacoustic emission testing, or OAE testing, is a method of assessment that measures the ear's response to sound. There are two types of OAEs available on the GSI CORDI. DPOAE, or Distortion Product Otoacoustic Emission Testing, uses pairs of pure tones to evaluate the patients for cochlear hearing function. TEOAE, or Transient Evoked Otoacoustic Emission Testing, uses a click stimulus to screen patients for cochlear hearing function. The CORDI sends the selected OAE stimulus into the ear and normally functioning outer hair cells in the cochlea generate a sound that can be measured in the ear canal. For screening tests, the results are automatically analyzed and assigned a pass or refer result. A pass means that an OAE was detected and the patient passed the screening. A refer means that an OAE was not detected and the patient did not pass the screening. Results obtained using diagnostic protocols are not automatically analyzed and must be interpreted by a qualified medical professional, such as an audiologist. To turn on the CORDI instrument, press the down button, which is located below the instrument's display screen. The yellow test light will appear briefly just above the display. The green ready light will remain on, indicating the instrument is ready to use. The CORDI instrument uses four buttons to control all functions of the instrument. These buttons are arranged in a directional cursor format. The arrows on the keypad, left, right, up and down, correspond to the arrows that are used on the screen. The screen will indicate which buttons to push by showing the appropriate arrow. The up key will always bring the instrument back to either the previous menu or to the main menu. The up key will also access the print command from the main menu. To perform OAE testing with the GSI CORDI, first gather the appropriate accessories. You will need the CORDI handheld instrument, the OAE probe, and the appropriate size ear tips. Connect the OAE probe to the CORDI using the HDMI plug. Prior to testing, perform a visual inspection of the blue probe tube to ensure that it is free from debris. The CORDI can be used on patients of all ages and for many different applications. Regardless of age, the patient must remain as still and as quiet as possible to ensure an accurate result. It is important to test in a quiet room, such as a small office or patient hospital room with the door closed. For newborn hearing screening, the OAE probe must be securely inserted into the baby's ear canal. Massage the front of the ear canal and pull down and out on the outer ear to pop open the ear canal. Select the appropriately sized ear tip and place it firmly on the probe. The red flanged ear tip will fit most newborn ears. However, you may need to select a different size based on the size of the infant's canal. If there is visible debris or fluid blocking the ear canal opening, it may be best to wait a few hours for the ears to dry out and then retry. Instructing small children about DPOAE screening is quite simple. You just need to pleasantly tell children that you'll be checking out how their ears are working. The child doesn't need to listen for any sounds or tell you if they hear a sound. They just need to sit quietly for a short time. Typically, the small blue, yellow, or green ear tips accommodate most ear canals of children ages three to seven. For older children and adults, 
it's a good idea to tell them what to expect during the OAE test. You can inform them that you are going to check how their ears are working by presenting sounds to their ears with the probe. They just need to sit quietly for a few seconds while the test runs. They do not need to pay attention to the sounds or tell you that they heard it. For all patient ages, place the ear tip firmly on the probe. Once you have inserted the probe into the patient's ear, make sure that when you let go of the earlobe, the ear tip is still firmly in place and that it will not easily fall out. Do not hold the OAE probe during the measurement because this can introduce noise that may interfere with the testing. Turn on the CORDI by pressing the down button. The most recently used test protocol will display on the screen. For example, if the CORDI was used for screening purposes, the test protocol may be DP4S or DP2S. To select a different OAE protocol, Press the down button on the QWERTY to enter the protocol selection, then use the right and left arrows to scroll through the available protocols. When the desired protocol is displayed, press the up button to return to the ready to test mode. At this point, insert the probe into the ear canal and clip the cable to the patient's collar. When you select the R button, the test for the right ear will begin. When you select the L button, the test for the left ear will begin. During the OAE test, the CORDI will display specific screens to indicate test progress. As soon as the test button is pressed, the CORDI will advance through a series of self-checks before performing the OAE test. The first step is the probe check. This step automatically evaluates the quality of the probe fit in the ear canal to ensure a quality fit and therefore a reliable test. On the display screen, you will see a cone shape with a white vertical line. The white vertical line represents the probe, and the cone shape represents the ear canal. If the white line is in the small yellow area of the cone, the probe is obstructed. It should be removed, evaluated for debris, and placed in the ear canal again. If the white line is in the large blue area of the cone, there is not a proper seal, and the probe should be adjusted to ensure an airtight fit, and you may need to change the ear tip to a larger or smaller size. When the white marker is in the middle of the green cone and not moving, a stable fit is detected, and the CORDI will automatically proceed to the calibration step. During calibration, the patient will hear a series of tones or beeps at different frequencies. The CORDI will adjust the intensity level at each frequency to ensure proper testing levels are achieved in the patient's ear canal. After calibration, OAE testing will begin. When conditions are ideal, the probe check and calibration phase only takes one to two seconds. During the OAE test, the results will display in real time as either a signal to noise bars or a value graph on the display screen of the CORDI. For screening protocols, the device automatically analyzes the OAE and determines whether the screening result is a pass or a refer. There are two criteria for a pass outcome. First, the amplitude of the DPs at each of the four test frequencies must be at least 6 dB above the noise floor. In addition, the DP minimum amplitude must be greater than minus 10 dB SPL. A pass or refer message will appear on the display screen of the QWERTY device when screening is complete. Test results are automatically stored. There are different options for printing or storing DPOAE data. For diagnostic OAE protocols, a pass or refer will not display. Test interpretation must be performed by a qualified professional such as an audiologist. When the test is completed, it is possible to view the results by pressing the down button on the CORDI. Only the most recent right and left tests are available for viewing. The CORDI is compatible with three software solutions from GSI. GSI Suite, GSI Data Manager, and GSI Auto Print. GSI Suite allows for combining OAE test results with audiometric test data. 
To transfer data to GSI Suite, select the OAE tab, connect the QWERTY to the computer with a micro USB cable or by using the optional cradle, ensure that the power is on and when the display screen says waiting on PC, press the batch button on the GSI Suite software. This will transfer all of the test results that are saved in the QWERTY and place them into an assigned tests window. From assigned tests, you may drag and drop the results into the appropriate patient record. GSI Data Manager is a basic database software that allows you to manage OAE data and is useful for newborn hearing screening programs. Demographic data and other patient details may be entered into the data manager software for tracking and reporting. It is very common for a facility to use data manager to create patient lists that are transferred onto the QWERTY for testing and then uploaded the results for organization and reporting. GSI auto print software application is used for printing purposes only and can be used instead of data manager. Auto print can be configured to print to PDF, print to a facility printer, or print to a label printer. When the QWERTY is connected to the PC, auto print will automatically print all tests held in the memory. Many users purchase the mini wireless printer with their GSI QWERTY. The printer should arrive already paired to the QWERTY. To print OAE test results, press the up button. If paired, Connect to PRT should appear on the display. Press the L or R buttons to print all of the tests stored in the QWERTY. Whether you use the database of GSI Suite or Data Manager, utilize auto print, or print to the mini printer, all tests results on the QWERTY will be deleted when the next test is started. The GSI QWERTY includes a menu that allows you to customize device and test settings. Many settings, like clock settings and language settings, are self-explanatory and will not be reviewed in this tutorial. The user manual has detailed explanations of each. The customized settings are accessed in the instrument's setting menu. To access, press the down button two or three times until the date and time appears. Then. Press and hold the down button for three seconds or until the green ready light turns off and release. The wireless printing menu will appear. This indicates that you are in the instrument settings menu. From this menu, you can scroll through the settings using the up or down navigation buttons. To change the settings, you will use the right and left navigation buttons. Any changes that are made in the instrument setting menu will be saved automatically. To exit the menu, continue to scroll through down until the QWERTY returns to the ready to test screen. There are additional diagnostic test settings in the GSI QWERTY which require advanced knowledge of OAEs. Professionals should review the QWERTY user manual for a complete explanation of these settings. If your printer is not paired, the wireless printing menu is where you set up your printer. To pair the wireless printer, make sure it is turned on and nearby. Press the right or left button to find wireless devices. The QWERTY will discover any wireless device that is nearby. To select the printer, scroll through the devices using the right and left button until Discovered PRT is displayed. Press the down button one time to pair to the printer. The QWERTY will save either one test per ear, the LR mode, or multiple tests, the Save 500 mode in the device memory. The Save LR is the default setting and means only one right and one left ear test will be saved. To change to Save 500 tests, press the R or L button. When you change this setting, the memory will clear and you will see zero out of 500 in the upper left-hand corner of the QWERTY display. Min value is an abbreviation for minimum OEE amplitude value and adds an additional criteria for a pass at each test frequency. In other words, the OAE must be measured, 
at or above the selected decibel level in addition to the 6 dB signal to noise ratio. The minimum amplitude value can be set in 1 dB steps from negative 10 dB SPL to positive 5 dB SPL. Check your facility guidelines for the appropriate test setting. The graph style menu allows you to select the way the test results appear on the display. The SNR graph view shows the signal to noise ratio for each OAE in a bar graph. The value graph shows both the OAE and the noise levels for each frequency in a more detailed view like an OAE gram. When value graph is selected, an additional menu item called norms becomes available. When norms are on, a shaded area will appear during testing for eligible DPOAE protocols. The norms have no effect on the overall test results and are for display purposes only. The QWERTY measures DPOAEs from the lowest frequency to the highest frequency in each protocol. The reverse frequency setting lets you change the order of presentation. When reverse frequency is set to off, all DPOAE protocols will test from low to high. When it is turned on, the frequency order is high to low. Screening tests, or test protocols with a pass refer criteria enabled, will evaluate every frequency in the protocol. The auto stop setting gives you the option to automatically stop the test when the pass criteria is met. This can save time by not continuing to test when a pass is already achieved. Auto stop is off by default and means that the QWERTY will test every frequency in the protocol. When auto stop is set to on, the DPOAE screening will stop as soon as all of the passing criteria have been met. This means some frequencies may not be tested. However, your pass refer rates will not be affected. If a patient has PE tubes, the probe check phase will not proceed and the probe check will need to be disabled. To disable, Select the ear to be tested by holding down the right or left button for three seconds until the green ready light turns off. Once the key is released, the QWERTY will perform calibration and begin the test. To obtain accurate test results, it is important to inspect the blue probe tube daily for signs of wear or blockage. If needed, replace the tube periodically. This can be done by pulling the tube off manually or using the included probe tube removal tool. To use the tool, slip it over the blue tube until it meets the probe body and pinch the ends together to grasp the tube. Pull to remove and discard the probe tube. Insert a new probe tube into the probe body until it is fully seated. A properly inserted probe tube will snap securely into place. The GSI QWERTY is not designated as a sterile device. Non-disposable parts of the system, including the probe and probe cable, which may be in direct contact with the patient, need to be disinfected between patients. This includes physically wiping down the pieces that come in contact with the patient by using a disinfectant approved by your facility. Use of a non-alcohol-based disinfectant is recommended. Non-alcohol-based products, which contain the active ingredient referred to as quaternary ammonia compound or a hydrogen peroxide-based cleaner may be used. Both disinfectants are specifically designed to disinfect rubber, plastics, silicone, and acrylic products, which are commonly used in hearing evaluation instruments. This concludes the tutorial on the GSI QWERTY. If additional questions arise, Consult the user manual, contact your local distributor, or contact GSI.